Now as we move on to domestic animals, let's first of all look at the cat. And here's an example which is our cat Tinker, who sadly is no longer with us, but gave us the pleasure of her company for many, many years, up to not too long ago. Now this is a good example of where you have a reference photo of an animal, or maybe it's uh, sitting in the garden and letting you, you sketch or paint it, but it doesn't easily show up where one bit of the body finishes and another bit starts, particularly here where the head is tucked into the side of the body and the legs are covered by pretty long fur. Right, now if we bring our little homemade pair of calipers in, let's measure Tinker's chin to her ears, and it's about that length there. If we then measure from that side of her face there, you can see the same measurement takes us to the edge of the fur on this side of her body to create the face like that. What is more surprising is that the same measurement almost exactly fits the side of her face to the end of her back leg here. You can see like that. Just as a little added bonus, we find the same measurement almost exactly replicates the length of the tail in this photograph. Always remember when you're painting or drawing anything, the size, width, height, depth of features will always be determined by the angle that you're looking at. That's why a tail this time looks as long as a body. Right, now using Tinker's head as a measure, you can see we can fit the whole outline into four simple boxes and then a couple of oblongs protruding for the tail and the legs and so on. Right, now at the risk of repeating myself, which I probably have several times, you can see how easy it is to put the cat in the right position using these boxes as the basic outline. And okay, yeah, it'll take a little bit of practice, but don't be afraid to use the eraser. You won't get it right first time. I haven't got it right in a lot of these demonstrations. I've used the eraser. It's just that I've cut that out at the editing stage because I don't want you to be bored by it. Don't feel inadequate. What you're looking at now I'm drawing is about the third attempt. Now looking at the photo of Tinker, although she was mainly a black cat, do you see how much area of light pale grey is showing where the sun is catching the shine on a coat? So that's why we're doing a base coat of this pale grey colour because that will become the light area once we put darker shadow on later. I'm actually using Payne's Grey for this base colour because Payne's Grey does lighten off quite considerably when it's dry. Now a stronger mix of the same colour that everything's dry and I'm stabbing on to give that sort of ruffled effect on her tail. Now Tinker had quite a lot of brown in her on the side of her body, particularly as she got older. So I'll put this in with a touch of light red and burnt umber. But don't worry, that's quite strong. It'll die back once it's all dried. Now I've blended that little bit in there with some lighter paint or almost water and dragged this out because I want this darker head here to stand out against that part of the body so you can actually see where the head starts and the body finishes. Right, I'm putting in colour and lifting it out just to give a little bit of modelling to the side of a body. A few flecks at the side of a tail just to give that windblown effect she always seemed to have. And all I'm doing now using the rigger is just dragging some dark colour so that the, the black and the white parts of the fur appear to in intermingle. And you see the light area just behind her head that helps to define where her head finishes and the rest of her body starts. Very simple but very effective. Right, so there we are. Now I said I didn't want it to become a portrait of Tinker and I suspect it rather has uh, for emotional reasons as much as anything. But what I wanted to set out to do was to show that taking a picture of a cat at, or any animal in fact, at a foreshortened and what the newcomer might consider a difficult and awkward angle to paint needn't be so. It's simply a matter of creating shapes. All that you do is adjust those basic shapes and get your measurements right and then that's going to see you through till you get your painting completed.